seek your face, to seek your presence. And we just seek your word to tell us, to show us, to guide us and to direct us so that we may be able to find you, to understand what it means to be in your presence, to seek your face. So let your will be done here this morning, Father. I ask your Ruach to move among your people open their ears to hear these words this morning and that they will become life and truth and that all will honor you this morning hallelujah so we're going to be looking into seeking the presence of yahuwah this morning are you searching for wisdom scripture says Seek Yahuwah and his strength. Seek his presence continually. First Chronicles 16, 11. If my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my presence or seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from the Shamaim or the heavens and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Second Chronicles 714. Believers are called to come before the presence or the face of Yahuwah. We are encouraged to seek his presence, yet many have no idea what this means. The concept of being before the face of Yahuwah actually refers to being in his very presence, to encountering him face to face, so to speak. There are numerous scripture verses that speak about this, some rather indirectly, as you review them, you'll notice that some of the connotations are not pleasant ones. Your relationship with Yahuwah, whether you believe in him or do not seriously, affects your experience when you are before his face, in his presence. The Hebrew term that's typically translated as face is the strong 6440, ponim, which means presence and before. And it's derived from pona, a primitive root, which means to turn by implication to face, i.e. appear, or look, behold, regard, or have respect, also to return. In order to comprehend what scripture intends, it's important to understand what the Hebrews understood the face to represent. When we saw the face of another, it meant that they were in the presence of that person. It was not merely a matter of looking at their physical face. When they faced someone, they entered into the full experience of the presence of that person. <coughs> Excuse me. This was especially true in one's relationship with Yahuwah. What we fail to remember is that no one has ever seen the face of Yahuwah. The following scripture passages verify this. In Exodus 33, 23, Then I will take away my hand, and you shall see my back, but my face shall not be seen. John 1, 18, No man has seen Yahuwah at any time. Therefore, we must recognize that whenever scripture talks about the face of Yahuwah, it is always referring to his presence. Since it represents his presence, to the Hebrew mind, it also meant that his very nature, his character, and his authority were also present. For them, even the mention of his name represented his actual presence with them. It was as if he was standing right in front of them. <clears throat> with these things in mind, you are invited to review what his word says about his face, his presence. Moreover, I said, I am the Elohim of your father, the Elohim of Abraham, the Elohim of Isaac, and the Elohim of Jacob. And Moshe hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon Yahuwah. Exodus 3, verse 6. 
and you have spoke to Moshe face to face, meaning presence to presence, a direct encounter, as a man speaks to his friend. Exodus 33, verse 11. And Yahuwah said to Moshe, I will do this thing also that you have spoken, for you have found favor in my sight, and I know you by name. And he said, I implore you, show me your magnificence. And he said, I will make all of my goodness pass before you, and I will proclaim the name of Yahuwah before you. And I will show favor to whom I will show favor. And I will show compassion on whom I will show compassion. But he said, you cannot see my face, literally. For there shall be no human being that can see me and live. And he was said, behold, there is a place by me. And you shall stand upon a rock. And it shall come to pass, while my magnificence passes by, that I will put you in a cleft of the rock and will cover you with my hand while I pass by. And I will take away my hand, and you shall see my back parts, but my face, literally, shall not be seen. Exodus 33, verse 17. And he was there with Yahuwah forty days and forty nights. He neither ate bread nor drank water. And he wrote down the tables, the words of the covenant, the Ten Commandments. And it came to pass when Moshe came down from Mount Sinai with the two tables or tables of testimony in Moshe's hand, when he came down from the mount, that Moshe did not know that the skin of his face shone, or it means that it, it, to send out rays or it glowed, while he talked with him. And when Aaron and all the children of Israel saw Moshe, behold, the skin of his face shone, and they were afraid to come near him. Exodus 34, verse 28. And whatever man there is of the house of Israel, or of the strangers that sojourn among you, who eat any manner of blood, I will even set my presence, or my face, if you will, against that being that eats blood, and will cut him off from among his people. For the life of the flesh is in the blood, and I have given it to you upon the altar to make an atonement for your souls. For it is the blood that makes an atonement for the being. Leviticus 17, verse 10. And I will set my presence against that man and will cut him off from amongst his people. Because he has given of his seed to Moloch. To defile my sanctuary and to profane my set-apart name. And if the people of the land in any manner hide their eyes from the man, when he gives of his seed unto Moloch, and do not kill him, then I will set my presence against that man and against his family, and will cut him off, and all that go a whoring after him to commit whoredom with Moloch from among their people. And the being that turns after such as having mediums, and after wizards, to go a whoring after them, I will even set my presence or my face against that being, and will cut him off from amongst his people. So sanctify yourselves, therefore, and be set apart. For I am Yahuwah, your Elohim, and you shall keep my statutes and do them. I am Yahuwah, who sanctifies you. Leviticus 20, verse 3. But if you will not listen to me and will not do all these commandments, and if you shall despise my statutes, or if you, your vital essence abhors my judgments, so that you will not do all my commandments, but that you break my covenant, I also will do this to you. I will even appoint over you terror, consumption, and the burning fever that shall consume the eyes and cause sorrow of heart, and you shall sow your seed in vain. For your enemy shall eat it, and I will set my presence against you, and you shall be slain before your enemies. They that hate you shall reign over you, or they that hate you shall reign over you, and you shall flee when none pursue you. 
Leviticus 26, 14. And Yahuwah spoke to Moshe, saying, Speak to Aaron and his son, saying, In this manner you shall barak the children of Israel, saying to them, Yahuwah barak you and keep you. Yahuwah make his presence enlighten you and show favor to you. Yahuwah lift up his presence over you and give you total well-being. And they shall put my name upon the children of Israel, and I will barak them. Number 622. And Moshe said to Yahuwah, Then the Mitzrites, or the Egyptians, shall hear it. For you brought up this people in your might from amongst them, and they will tell it to the inhabitants of the land. For they have heard that you, Yahuwah, are among this people, that you, Yahuwah, are seen face to face. That's a euphemism. And that your cloud stands over them, and that you go before them by day in a pillar of clouds and a pillar of fire by night. Numbers 14, verse 13. And Moshe called all Israel and said unto them, Hear, Israel, the statutes and judgments which I speak in your ears this day, that you may learn them and keep and do them. Yahuwah, our Lord, he made a covenant with us in Horeb. Yahuwah made this covenant not with our fathers, but with us, even us, who are all of us here alive this day. Yahuwah talked with you face to face, another use prism. In the mount, out of the midst of the fire, I stood between Yahuwah and you at that time to show you the word of Yahuwah, for you were afraid by reason of the fire and did not go up into the mount, saying, I am Yahuwah, your Elohim, who brought you out of the land of Mitzrayim from the house of bondage. You shall have no other Elohim before me, or literally in my presence. Deuteronomy 5, verse 1. And Yahuwah said to Moshe, Behold, you shall sleep with your fathers, and this people will rise up and Go whoring after the Elohim, or gods, of the strangers of the land, where they go to be among them, and will forsake me, and break my covenant which I have made with them. Then my anger shall be kindled against them in that day, and I will forsake them, and I will hide my presence or my face from them, and they shall be devoured, and many evils and troubles shall befall them, so that they will say in that day, have not these evils come upon us because our Elohim is not amongst us? And I will surely hide my presence or my face in that day for all the evils which they shall have brought. And that they have turned unto other Elohim or other gods. Deuteronomy 31, verse 16. And when Yahuwah saw it, he despised them because of the provoking of his sons and of his daughters. And he said, I will hide my presence from them. I will see what their end shall be. For they are a very perverse generation, children in whom is no amuna or no faith. Deuteronomy 32, 19. And there arose not a prophet since in Israel like Moshe, whom Yahuwah knew face to face. Another euphorism. Deuteronomy 34, verse 10. And it came to pass when Yahushua, or Joshua, was by Jericho, that he lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, there stood a man over against him with his sword drawn in his hand. And Yahushua went to him and said to him, Are you for us or for our adversaries? And he said, No, but as captain of the host of Yahuwah, Am I now come? And Yahushua, or Joshua, fell on his face to the earth and worshipped, and said to him, What says my sovereign to his servant? And the captain of Yahuwah's host of hosts said unto Yahushua, or Joshua, Loose your shoes from off your feet, for the place on which you stand is Kadosh. And Yahushua did so. Joshua is virtually the same name as that given to the Mashiach. Yahusha. When, or and when Gideon perceived that he was the Moloch or the angel of Yahuwah, Gideon said, Alas, Yahuwah, Elohim, for I have seen the Moloch of Yahuwah face to face. 
And Yahuwah said unto him, Shalom, or peace to you. Fear not, you shall not die. Then Gideon built an altar there to Yahuwah and called it Yahuwah Shalom, Judges 6, 22. Now, therefore, let my blood not fall to the earth before the presence of Yahuwah. For the king of Israel has come out to seek a flea. As soon or as when one hunts a partridge in the mountains. 1 Samuel 26, verse 20. And the king answered and said unto the man of Yahuwah, Entreat now the presence of Yahuwah, your Elohim, and pray for me, that my hand may be restored to me again. 1 Kings 13, verse 6. Give thanks to Yahuwah. Call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the people. Sing to him. Sing songs to him. Talk of all his wondrous works. Esteem in his set-apart name. Let the heart of them rejoice who seek Yahuwah. Seek Yahuwah and his strength. Seek his presence continually. Remember his marvelous works that he has done, his wonders and the judgments of his mouth. You seed of Israel, his servant. You children of Jacob, his chosen ones. He is Yahuwah, our Elohim. His judgments are in all of the earth. First Chronicles 16, verse 8 to 14. Acquaint yourself with him now and be at shalom. Therefore, good shall come to you. Receive, I pray, the Torah from his mouth and lay up his words in your heart. If you return to the Almighty, you shall be built up. You shall put away iniquity far from your tabernacles or sin, fire from your tabernacles. Then shall you lay up gold as dust, and the gold of Ophir as the stones of the brooks. Yes, the Almighty shall be your defense, and you shall have plenty of silver. For then shall you have your delight in the Almighty, and shall lift up your face unto Yahuwah. You shall make your prayer to him, and he shall hear you. And you shall pray your vows. You shall also decree a thing, and it shall be established unto you. And the light shall shine upon your ways. Job 22, verse 21. He shall pray to Yahuwah, and he will be favorable to him. He shall see his presence with joy. For he will render unto man his just action. Job 33, 28. I will declare your name to my brothers. In the midst of the congregation will I praise you. You who fear Yahuwah, praise him. All you, the seed of Jacob, honor him and fear him, all of you, the seed of Israel. For he has not despised nor adored the affliction of the afflicted. Neither has he hidden his presence from him. But when he cried unto him, he heard. My praise shall be of you in the great congregation. I will pay my vows before those who fear him. Psalms 22, verse 22. Who shall ascend into the hill of Yahuwah? Or who shall stand in his kadosh place? He that has clean hands and a pure heart. Who has not lifted up his being unto vanity, nor swore deceitfully. He shall receive the baraka, or the blessing, from Yahuwah, and justice from the Elohim of his salvation. This is the generation of them that seek him, that seek your presence, that seek your face. Psalm 24.3 Hear, Yahuwah, when I cry with my voice. Have compassion also on me, and answer me. When you said, seek my presence, or seek my face, my heart said to you, your presence, Yahuwah, will I seek. Hide not your presence or your face far from me. Put not your servant away in anger. You have been my help. Leave me not, nor forsake me, Elohim of my salvation. Psalms 27, verse 7. Make your presence to shine upon your servant. Save me for your compassion's sake. Let me not be ashamed, Yahuwah, for I have called upon you. Psalms 31, 16. The eyes of Yahuwah are upon the righteous, 
and his ears are open unto their cry. The presence of Yahuwah is against them that do evil, to cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. The righteous cry out, and Yahuwah hears and delivers them out of all their troubles. Yahuwah is near to those who are of a broken heart, and save the crush in Ruach, or in spirit. Psalms 34, 15. Yahuwah shows favor to us, and Barak us, or blesses us, and causes his presence or his face to shine upon us, Selah, that your way may be known upon the earth, your saving health among all nations, Psalm 67, verse 1. Hear me, Yahuwah, for your kindness is good. Turn to me according to the multitude of your compassions, and hide not your presence from your servant, for I am in trouble. Hear me speedily, Psalm 69, 16. Give ear, O shepherd of Israel, you who lead Yosef like a flock, you who dwells between the cherubim, shine forth. Before Ephraim and Benjamin and Manah, stir up your strength and come and save us. Turn us again, Yahuwah, and cause your presence to shine, and we shall be delivered. Yahuwah, Yahuwah of assemblies, how long will you be angry against the prayers of your people? You feed them with the bread of tears and give them tears to drink in great measure. <coughs> you make us an object of contention for our neighbors and our enemies laugh among themselves. Restore us, Yahuwah of hosts, and cause your presence to shine and we shall be delivered. Psalms 80 verse 1. Oh, give thanks to Yahuwah. Call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the people. Sing to him. Sing psalms to him. Talk of all his wondrous works. Make your boast in his set apart or his kadosh name. Let the heart of them rejoice that seek Yahuwah. Seek Yahuwah in his strength. Seek his presence always. Psalms 105.1. Make your presence to shine upon your servant and teach me your statutes. Psalms 119, verse 135. Behold, Yahuwah's hand is not shortened so that it cannot save, nor is his ear heavy that it cannot hear. But your iniquities have separated you from your Elohim, and your sins have hidden his presence from you so that he will not hear. For your hands are defiled with blood, and your fingers with iniquity. Your lips have spoken lies. Your tongue has muttered perverseness. None calls for justice, for any plea for truth. They trust in vanity and speak lies. They conceive mischief and bring forth iniquity. Isaiah 59, verse 1. And there is none that calls upon your name that stirs up himself to take hold of you. For you have hid your presence from us and have consumed us because of our iniquities. Isaiah 64, 7. Yahushua answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. John 14, verse 6. No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws them, and I will raise them up at the last day. John 6, 44. The presence of Yahuwah is an awesome thing to encounter. If he grants you access into his presence, it is typically for the purpose of baraka, or blessing you. You have a role to play in which experience you have. It's all based on whether or not you choose willingly to believe in him and his commandments and his Sabbath, that you are allowed entrance into his presence. And that's what we do when we come into our worship as Many of you have experienced. This is the process that we go by. So Yahuwah's Yuhu, order of worship is very important. Worship is important because it's the key to Kadosha or holiness and allows us to enter Yahuwah's presence and is the secret to true joy and happiness. What else could be more important? Without being Kadosh or holy, if you will, we cannot worship. Without being worshipers, we will not be able to enter his presence. Without his presence, we'll have no joy. And without joy, Nehemiah 8 tells us, we'll have no strength. The joy of Yahuwah is our strength. Yahuwah 
you make known to me the path of life. In your presence, there is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Psalm 1611. I'm convinced that without these things, we won't be able to withstand the trials that Yahuwah allows in our lives. Worship truly is the most important thing a chosen believer can learn to do. Worship is the reason we were created in the first place, according to Revelation 4.11, which tells us that Yahuwah created us for His pleasure. He yearns for our fellowship and our love. Therefore, our true relationship with Him is shown forth in our worship. Surrender is the key, though. So, worship flows from love. We worship what we love. The word used in Scripture is the verb to love. It is the Greek word agapeo, which means to totally give ourselves over to something, to surrender all to it. Yahuwah desires that we give back to him the life that he granted us in the first place. In other words, total relinquishment is a choice that we make out of our own free will and out of our love for him. Love for Yahuwah, then, is not just an emotional feeling, but a complete surrender of ourselves our hearts, our minds, and our soul. We have put off our sin and self, then we have put on the Mashiach. On the other hand, when we do not know how to love Yahuwah, how to completely surrender our lives to Him, we will not be able to truly worship Him. Love comes before worship. In summary, we can only worship Yahuwah to the degree that we love Him, and to the degree to which we are surrendered cleansed, and kadosh. So, the temple revisited. Speaking of being surrendered, cleansed, and kadosh, let's turn back for just a moment to the cleansing ceremony that Yahuwah ordained for the priests of Solomon's temple. <coughs> when I first began to explore the intricacies of this fascinating temple, the kadosh of Kodesha, or the holies, and the Kadosh place, and the inner and outer courts, I saw many parallels between the temple's blueprint and the interior architecture of man, i.e. the spirit, heart, soul, and body. I was fascinated by these similarities. Were they, were they just a coincidence, or rather Yahuwah's clues to something much deeper? With over 52 chapters in the Tanakh mentioning this temple and its ceremonies, I figure there must be something very important here. As we proceed with this comparison, you judge for yourself. See if it uh, validates to you the fingerprints of Yahuwah and the divine connection between the architecture of man and Solomon's temple. I'm convinced there are important principles that we can learn from studying Solomon's temple and the ceremonies Yahuwah ordained for worship. Yahuwah tells us that everything in scripture, from the smallest detail to the greatest, is there for our learning. Romans 15, 4. In other words, he has given us many visual word pictures in scripture to help us understand his ways a little more clearly. Solomon's temple is definitely one of these the priest worship service. So how did the priest in this temple worship Yahuwah? What was their order of service like? After the Levites opened the outer court gate for the people, they began to sing and praise Yahuwah. Then the priests entered the inner court and immediately went to the labors of bronze, where they washed their hands and feet. After that, they approached the brazen altar, where they sacrificed their animals in order to purge the sins of the people. Next, they immersed themselves bodily in the molten sea. And finally, they took a censer full of hot coals from the brazen altar, went back into the Kadosh place where they changed their clothes, took some incense and sprinkled it over the coals at the golden incense altar, where Yahuwah promised to meet with them, according to Exodus 25, verse 22. Approaching the golden altar of incense, they took off their shoes, they prostrated, or they bowed down themselves and worshipped Yahuwah in the beauty of Kodesha, or holiness. Give unto Yahuwah the esteem due unto him. Bring an offering and come before him. Worship Yahuwah in the beauty or the splendor of Kodesha, or holiness. 
First Chronicle 16, verse 29. Give unto Yahuwah the esteem due unto his name. Worship Yahuwah in the beauty or the splendor of Kodesha, or holiness, if you will. Psalms 29, 2. Oh, worship Yahuwah in the beauty or the splendor of Kodesha. Fear before him all the earth. Psalms 96, 9. Upon leaving the Kadosh place, the priests then shared of the fullness of Yahuwah or the anointing, uh, the anointing that they had received at the golden altar by addressing all the people who had gathered in the courtyard. One of the passages they recited was number 6, verses 24 through 26. Yahuwah barak you and guards you, or keep you, if you will. Yahuwah make his face shine upon you and show favor, or be gracious unto you. Yahuwah lift up his countenance, or lift up his face upon you, and give you shalom, or give you peace. Thus, they shall put my name on the children of Israel, and I myself shall barak them. They repeated this entire ceremony twice a day, once in the morning and once at night. Now, let's explore each of these areas and each of these ceremonies in a little more detail. First, the outer court. All of Israel had access to the outer courts and thus could freely come in and out, whereas only the priests could enter into the Kadosh sanctuary. The first thing that occurred in the outer court was that of the shofar was sounded and the Levites opened the gates for the people to enter. Psalms 118 verses 19 through 23 describes this scene. Open to me the gates of righteousness. These are the gates that lead to the presence of Yahuwah. Other Levite priests also began to sing with the people. O oh, come, let us sing unto Yahuwah. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and make a joyful noise unto him with psalms. Psalms 95, verses 1 and 2. Psalms 100, verses 2 and 4, as well as 118, verse 19. The Levites were commissioned not only to guard all the temple gates, but also to sing a new song each day. These songs were as important to the service as were the du uh, priestly duties themselves. Three times during their song, they would pause while the priests sounded their shofars and all the people in the courtyard would fall down and prostrate themselves before Yahuwah. They did this both at the beginning and at the end of the service. The inner court. The official priests, only those who were direct descendants of Aaron, would then enter the inner courts, wash their hands and feet at the lab of brands, and await the time for the slaughtering of the sacrifices. When the time arrived, the priests moved to the brazen altars where they sacrificed their offerings in order to symbolize, uh, symbolically remove the sins of the people in order that they could be reconciled to Yahuwah. Now, of course, this is a picture of Yahusha's sacrifice, and as he is our high priest, and he is the one that sacrificed his shed blood, that we could be reconciled to Yahuwah, to our Amana, to our faith. Finally, the priests bathe in the molten sea by completely, or complete bodily immersion as a symbol that Yahuwah had indeed washed away their sins. Thus, the inner court was known as the cleansing and atoning area. And this is also a picture for us about water baptism, the importance of being cleansed and purified, and purifying ourselves, I should say, before we even enter in or can enter into the presence of Yahuwah. We have to be cleansed and purified. We have to be kadosh to enter into the kadosh place. Oh, yeah. Fire, incense, tapestry, and gold all led the priest higher and higher up the kadosh place and the incense altar where he worshiped Yahuwah. Following the offering of the sacrifices in the inner court, one of the priests gathered some hot coals and a brass a carrier from the brazen altar and carry them into the Kadosh place where he promptly changed his clothes. Once he had put off his dirty clothes and put on his clean ones, he picked up the hot coals and placed them on the incense altar. Another priest stood by holding the incense. A third priest took the incense in the songs of the, uh, in the palms of his hands and after the first two left, scattered the incense over the hot coals. 
The fire and the smoke from the incense rose up towards the ceiling, spread out and filled the entire sanctuary, according to 1 Kings 8, verse 10 through 11. The last priest then prostrated himself on the ground. While all this was going on, the other priests came to the Kadosh place to witness the offering of incense, and they too prostrated themselves. Upon leaving the temple sanctuary, the high priest stood upon the steps facing the congregation in the outer court. The rest of the priests joined him there, and they all extended their hands towards the Shamaim, or the heavens, and called upon the name of Yahuwah. The head priest then Baruch the people and recited scripture. At this reading, the rest of the priests and all the people again fell on their faces and worshipped Yahuwah. So how does all this apply to us? Again, the question, does this Hebrew Tanakh, or the old uh, covenant temple service, have anything to do with us? The Brit Hadashah, the new covenant believers. In other words, can we apply all we have learned here to our own daily de uh, devotional times? Yes, it seems we can, especially on the Shabbat or the Sabbath. I do not mean to imply that there is some sort of ritual or ceremony that we must do in order to work our way towards Yahuwah. That's not what I'm saying at all. However, I do believe that by this service, Yahuwah has given us a set of guidelines and that by following these suggestions, not only will our devotional times be acceptable to him, but also they will become an incredible baraka to us. The most important thing we can do is allow the Ruach HaKodesh the freedom to direct us. Because, of course, only he knows the perfect way for us to worship. Again, Yahuwah made the rules. We must simply carry them out. However, in order to carry them out, we must first understand what they are. So let's briefly explore what the word of Yahuwah has to say about worshiping and see if there is any connection to Solomon's temple and its priests. A couple of obvious scripture connections are 1 Corinthians 3.16 and 2 Corinthians 6.16, which both tell us that we are the temple of Yahuwah and that the Ruach of Yahuwah dwells in us, just as he did in Solomon's temple. Paul is making an analogy or a word picture here by saying that our body is a temple and the Ruach HaKodesh dwells in us. Remember that the Tanakh or the Old Testament, the Ruach HaKodesh dwell in the Kadosh of Kodesh or the Holy of Holies of Solomon's temple. Scripture tells us that now Yahuwah's Ruach dwells in the temples not made with hands, i.e. us, you and I, according to Acts 17.24. 1 Peter 2.9 also tells us that we are a royal priesthood. That should show forth the praises of him who has called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. And verse 5 of that same chapter says, We also, a Kadosh priesthood, should offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to Yahuwah by Yahushua HaMashiach, the Mashiach, or the Messiah. And Revelation 1.6 says, Yahushua HaMashiach, the Messiah, if you will, has made us kings and priests unto Yahuwah. And Revelation 5.10, which says, He has made us kings and priests, that we should reign upon the earth. And finally, Hebrews 10, verse 19 through 24, and Revelation 5.8, talks about believers having boldness to enter the Kadosh place and worship. Psalms 27.4 violates all of the above. One thing have I desired of Yahuwah, that I will seek after, that I may dwell in the house of Yahuwah all the days of my life. And I'm sorry, that, it validates all of these things. When it tells us that the one thing have I desired of Yahuwah, that I will seek after, that I may dwell in the house of Yahuwah all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of Yahuwah and to inquire in his temple. Thus, there seems to be a valid scriptural comparison between the true worshipers of Yahuwah, who worship Yahuwah in Ruach and in truth, John 4, 23, and the priests of Solomon's temple who worship Yahuwah in the beauty of Kodesha, or holiness, at the incense altar. Again, 
The latter was under the Tanakh without the Mashiach, and the former under the New Covenant with the Mashiach. But the comparison is there, and Scripture seems to suggest that it is important. Out of the same mouth comes praise and cursing. My brother and sister, this should not be. James 3.10 Though the fig tree does not bud, and there are no grapes on the vines, though the olive crops fail, and the fields produce no food, Though there are no sheep in the pen and no cattle in the stalls, yet I will rejoice in Yahuwah. I will be joyful in Yahuwah, my Savior. Habakkuk 3, verse 17 and 18. Why, my soul, are you downcast? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in Yahuwah, for I will yet praise him, my Savior and my Elohim. Psalm 42, 11. It is written, as surely as I live, says Yahusha, every knee will bow before me, every tongue will acknowledge Yahuwah, Romans 14, 11. Yahuwah is Ruach, and his worshipers must worship him in Ruach and in truth, according to John 4, 24. You, Yahuwah, are my Elohim, earnestly I seek you, I thirst for you, my whole being longs for you in a dry and parched land where there is no water. Psalm 63, verse 1. How great are you, sovereign Yahuwah! There is no one like you, and there is no Elohim but you, as we have heard with our own ears. 2 Samuel 7, 22. There is no one to know like Yahuwah. There is no one besides you. There is no rock like our Elohim. 1 Samuel 2, 22. Sing to Yahuwah, sing in praise to, of his name. Extol his, him who rides on the clouds, rejoice before him. His name is Yahuwah, a father to the fatherless and a defender of widows. He is Elohim in his Kadosh dwelling. Psalm 68, verse 4 and 5. Let them shout for joy and rejoice who favor my vindication. And let them say continually, Yahuwah be magnified, who delights in the prosperity of his servant. Psalms 35, verse 27. Shout joyfully to Yahuwah, all the earth. Sing out of the splendor of his name. Make his praise esteemed. Psalm 66, verses 1 and 2. Shout for joy to Yahuwah, all the earth. Burst in the jubilant song with music. Psalm 98, 4. For giving grateful praise, shout for joy to Yahuwah, all the earth. Psalm 101. Thus, all of Israel brought up, uh, brought up the Ark of the Covenant of Yahuwah with shouting and with sounds of the horns, with shofars, with loud sounding cymbals, with harps and lyres. First Chronicles 15, verse 28. Moreover, they made an oath to Yahuwah with a loud voice, with shouting, with shofars, and with horns. 2 Chronicles 15, 14. O oh, clap your hands, all peoples. Shout to Yahuwah with the voice of joy. Psalms 47, 1. They sang praises and giving thanks to Yahuwah, saying, For he is good, for his loving kindness is upon Israel forever. And all the people shouted with a great shout when they praised Yahuwah, because the foundation of the house of Yahuwah was laid. Ezra 3, 11. Rejoice greatly. O daughter of Zion, shout in Shofar, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you. He is just and endowed with salvation, humble and mounted on a donkey, even a colt, a foal of a donkey. <clears throat> Zechariah 9, verse 9. <clears throat> Sing to him a new song. Play skillfully with a shout of joy. Psalms 33, 3. Sing for joy to Yahuwah, our strength. Shout joyfully to our Elohim of Jacob. Psalms 81.1. One. Oh, come, let us sing for joy to Yahuwah. Let us shout joyfully to the rock of our salvation. Psalms 95, verse 1. But let all who take refuge in you be glad. Let them sing, or let them ever sing for joy. And may you shout to them, that those who love your name may exalt in you. Psalms 5.11. Yahuwah, you are my Elohim. 
I will exalt you and praise your name. For in perfect faithfulness, you have done wonderful things, things planned long ago. Isaiah 25, 1. So David and all the house of Israel were bringing up the ark of Yahuwah with shouting and the sound of the shofar. 2 Samuel 6, 15. Praise Yahuwah, my soul, all my innermost being. Praise his Kadosh name, Psalms 103, 1. My mouth is filled with your praise, declaring your splendor all day long. Psalm 71, 8. Give praise to Yahuwah. Proclaim his name. Make known among the nations what he has done. Psalms 105, 1. I say to Yahuwah, you are my master. Apart from you, I have no good thing. Psalm 16, 2. I spread out my hands to you. I thirst for you like a parched land. Psalms 145. Three, verse 6. I cried out to him with my mouth. His praise was on my tongue. Psalm 66, 17. Then you will call on me and come and pray to me, and I will listen to you. Jeremiah 29, verse 12. Yahuwah intended that they would seek him and perhaps reach out for him and find him, though he is not far from each one of us. Acts 17, 27. Draw near to Yahuwah, and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. James 4, 8. For I know the plans I have for you, declares Yahuwah, plans for welfare and not for evil, to give you a future and hope. <clears throat> then you will call upon me and come and pray to me, and I will hear you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all of your heart. Jeremiah 29, 13. But from there, you will seek you who you are with him, and you will find him. If you search after him with all of your heart, with all of your soul, when you are in the tribulation and all these things come upon you in the later days, you will return to Yahuwah, your Elohim, and obey his voice. For Yahuwah, your Elohim, is a merciful Elohim. He will not leave you or destroy you or forget the covenant with your fathers that he swore to them. Deuteronomy 4, verse 29 through 31. I love those who love me, and those who seek me diligently find me. Proverbs 8, 17. Yahuwah is good to those who wait for him, to the soul who seeks him. Lamentation 3, 25. And those who know your name put their trust in you. For you, O Yahuwah, have not forsaken those who seek you. Psalms 9, verse 10. Baruch are those who keep his testimonies, who seek him with their whole heart, who also do no wrong, but walk in his ways. Psalms 119, verse 2 and 3. Seek Yahuwah in his strength. Seek his presence continually. Psalms 105, 4. The more we seek him, the more we find him waiting for us. May the presence of Yahuwah be crystallized in our consciousness. Yahuwah's name signifies his presence. So let us awake and rise up in awareness to the esteem of Yahuwah through his only begotten son, Yahusha HaMashiach, and begin to praise, honor, and esteem his Kadosh, or his Serpar name. Hallelujah, Yahuwah, Barak his Kadosh, or his Serpar name, today and forevermore. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Shalom to all. We brought your name, Father, we thank you for this message today to show us how we can seek your presence, how we can seek your face, and how we can find you, how we can honor you and esteem you in all of our ways. So we ask you, Father, to continue to move upon us, to continue to reveal your truths to us as we continue to seek you. Let your, your Ruach dwell in us and continue to guide and direct and to perfect us, to make us more like you, Yahusha, that we are pleasing and honorable to our Father as we continue to seek his face. We just brought your name, Father. We ask that you continue to do mighty things in your people. And I ask for your Barak upon your people, wherever they are in this earth. Draw them unto yourself. Let them find you. Let them seek your presence. And let them know you more intimately than they ever have before. And I ask for your Barak upon them in every area of their life, in their finances, in their health, in their relationships with each other, as well as their relationship with you, Father. 
I give you praise and honor this day. Let your will continue to be done. Through an in Yahushua HaMashiach, we give you praise and honor. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Barak the name of Yahuwah forevermore.